Hello and welcome back. This is Daniel of Daniel Game Studios. Today we are going to be doing Unreal Tutorials. Uh, I'm going to try to schedule them after the Bracky style of uh, tutorials, but instead of being for Unity, they're for Unreal. I'm using Unreal Engine 5 as that's what I personally prefer. You can find it um, in the Epic Game Store launcher just by going to the Unreal section of that and selecting Unreal Engine 5. It's finally out of beta and is actually available to everyone um, openly and it is a complete product uh, in terms of such and is what most people are going to be using in the future. Um, there are still some games being made with Unreal Engine 4, but newer games are going to be using Unreal Engine 5 because of its benefits. Um, I'm just going to set this to scalable. Uh, I'm going to be using the first person template. I'm setting it to scalable. Uh, you want to do that if you aren't, like, if you're trying to make something that's, like, for mobile or is for, um, you know, just not for, uh, not for, like, high end desktops, you want to set that to scalable. Uh, I'm going to leave ray tracing disabled because I'm recording and, um, yeah, I don't want my computer having to do ray tracing at the same time. I'll just name this, uh, test. And I'm going to change its project location to, uh, or, yeah, to test. Uh, select select folder, create. It's going to create, and um, I'll be back as soon as this is done creating. Okay, cool. We're uh, finally loaded in. This tutorial is just going to be about the general overview of Unreal and how Unreal works as an editor. Uh, stuff like moving around, uh, placing objects, creating stuff, uh, maybe some uh, yeah, placing objects, all that stuff. The next tutorial is going to go over blueprints, uh, and how they work, setting up like a basic blueprint system, but for this tutorial, it's just, uh, how to move around everything that you're going to need to know for the beginnings of, uh, using Unreal. Okay, it's very much Unity-like, uh, in that you right-click, and then you can use WASD to move around, uh, kind of like you'd move around in any other game, uh, if you aren't holding anything, or if you aren't Holding right click, then WASD does jack crap. But you can use the uh, you can use the arrow keys without holding right click. If you hold right click, your mouse also controls uh, which way you're looking up, right, left, down. Uh, basically, like any first person shooter. If you want to think about it that way. Um, let's see what else. Um, over here, you have your outliner. This has all of the objects in your scene. Um, you can have folders for objects all here, uh, right here. There's an output log. This is where you can see any errors, uh, compilation errors, any information. If you need to ask for any help about some error, you'd want to copy wherever your error is. Like, say here, say this some made something like not work. Uh, you copy that, and then you could do some searching and stuff. It gives you all the information you need for that. You can also... Uh, you can also go here to filter out messages, warnings, or errors. So if you only want to look at what your errors were, you can remove that. Uh, if you only want to see warnings and errors, you can do that. I'd recommend uh, I'd recommend to just leave them all on because it doesn't hurt anything. Uh, unless you're trying to look for anything specific. Here you can enable word wrapping, uh, just basic stuff. Uh, here is all of your files, um, your main content folder, and then because we included starter content, here's all the, here's all that. Uh, oh, I don't typically see more in the starter content. That's interesting. Did I not include starter content? Okay, well that gives me another uh, thing to show. If you accidentally don't include, uh, if you accidentally say don't include starter content, as I might not have, you can go to, I believe it is, uh, Oh, no, that's help. Um, okay. Should be in uh, project settings. Or actually, oh, wait, no, this is all the uh, different project settings here. Uh, we're going to talk about that soon. Um, there is a way to do it. I just forgot it at this second. Um, okay. Let's see, I, I, I don't have any of this scripted because uh, time constraints, that's also why I didn't have this up last week like I kind of wanted to, uh, just, you know, different time constraints. Uh, so, sorry if it seems a little discombobulated. Um, okay, 
you can, if you want to build the project, you can go here to platforms and then say you want to build it for Windows, you hit package project. Uh, Cook project isn't really needed much anymore. Um, that used to be for Unreal Engine 4 and how that did lighting, you had to bake lighting, but Unreal uh, 5 by default uses uh, real Lumen for its lighting system, which is, it can be used for both ray tracing and conventional lighting. Uh, so uh, you don't need to bake lighting anymore, typically. Um, here is your play, so you can play uh, your content. Uh, you can stop the simulation, and you can remove it if you want to. Uh, this is just stuff that's built in. That's loud as shit. Um, but yeah, that's just all built in uh, to this template. Uh, let's see what else. You have, ah, here it is. Um, you can import content. Uh, or no. Yeah, you can import content uh, here. There's Quixel Bridge, there's the Marketplace. Quixel Bridge is, um, it, it's a, yeah, 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 wow. Um, it is a, basically it's a full of a ton of high resolution free scans of a lot of stuff. So say you need a 3D asset, you're allowed to use like all this in your project. Like say I went to food, baked goods, um, and then, I don't know, uh, colored, uh, colored chip cookie. And I would import it with, uh, well I have to sign in, but you know, you can hit import, it would show up here, you can drag it into the world. Um, let's see, to show something, to show just drag something into the world, say I want to put this mesh down, you just take it from your content drawer and you drag it. Uh, simple stuff. Um, there's also, uh, you know, different textures and stuff. Uh, there is, what else? Uh, oh, okay. Let's show off the details panel. If you select an object, you can see its details. There's the transform. Everything's going to have a transform. Uh, this is a light, so it has these light parameters. You can change them all. They have default values, uh, so say I disable effects world, I can hit this to give it back to its default value, or if I, or if you like mess with something here and you don't like how it looks for whatever reason, you can undo it. Um, there's just all the different details you could ever need to know. You can also, uh, I don't know exactly what that did. Uh, you can change, uh, there are different filters here for if it's like a general thing or it's like different rendering stuff, um, different ideas like that. Um, another thing that's important to know, this is the game window. This is where you can go around, um, though that's kind of obvious. Um, there is different view modes that you can see an unlight view. This is basically without any, uh, lighting. So it's just the raw textures. You can see a wireframe, which allows you to see polygons. Uh, there's a detail lighting, which I... Ah, it's basically the environment with only shadows and no textures. So it's the opposite of Unlit, where Unlit is um, only textures and no lighting. There's lighting only, which seems to be similar to the other one. Uh, there's reflections, where it makes everything reflective, I guess. Um, Player collision, so this is everything that you can collide with. Uh, visibility collisions, everything you can see, I'm guessing. Uh, optimization, view models. Uh, you can see nanite visualization, uh, luma visualization. You can see basically everything from everywhere. And then here, you have uh, different view models. You can go to perspective, bottom, left, right, back, all that. Um, basically, so you can see everything. Here, there's a uh, real time. You can show your FPS by clicking that. Getting well over 100 FPS here. Um, there is different engine statistics. Uh, I'm going to go into more detail about all these later. There is, you know, just a lot of different things you can select uh, there. Let's see. Another. Another thing we should show off, um, if we go into edit, um, 
editor preferences or no this is editor preferences you want to go and edit uh project settings that's the important one so here you can set a uh, description um, of project ID that's kind of just randomly generated um, project name project version you can set a thumbnail so uh, small small problem most of this stuff doesn't actually work uh, from what I've been able to tell uh, you can set here you can set uh, you can encrypt stuff uh, this is basically if you just want to make it hard for people to mod your game uh, you could enable these encryptions um, or if you don't want people uh, it's not going to stop piracy but it will make it harder for modders uh, if you don't like modding for whatever reason um, maps and modes here you can set up a default game mode which this is basically you can think of a game mode um, as uh, you can think of a game mode as like basically the default character that spawns uh, which controls your camera perspective, your mesh, if you can move, all that stuff. Then here you can define like a startup map. So say you had more than one map, like say you had a menu map, you can set your menu map as your startup map, and that would be what you load but, uh, in the beginning by default. Otherwise, it's just going to load uh, this map. Uh, there is, you know, uh, different packing modifications here most of the stuff you don't need to change um a lot of this stuff i almost never have to change the stuff but there are times where very specific things require you to change it uh, you can just kind of click through it platforms here you can set your uh support here you can set like different spe specifics for different platforms like if i go to windows i can tell it if i wanted to use vulcan or directx 11 or directx 12 uh what i wanted to support uh, if I want it to compile with any of these, I can set an editor splash and a game splash. So that's like the splash screen that shows up whenever you load the game. Though, for whatever reason, I don't really seem to see a game splash load up all too much. So the editor splash can be used. And this game icon uh, is what is used as the icon for your game when it's built. Um, you have different plugin controls here. Uh, how do you use them? Let's see, I believe it is um, support of platforms. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I believe it is, yes, support of platforms is here. Uh, ah, project support of platforms, okay. So you can deselect all platforms to say, you know, you are making it for Android or HoloLens or iOS or you just want to like make it for Windows and Linux or whatever. Um, then you can do that and it just clears up some clutter here. Um, also, here you can build your project. So say you want to build it, you do package project. Um, and then you can put it in, I'm just going to put it one folder up and name it build. Because that's just what I personally like to do to keep everything all nice and organized. And I select. And if I go to output log, you can see it build the project over here. Um, it should build with no problems. Okay, uh, your first build's going to take a minute. You know it's good whenever you see that little green check mark that just went by. Um, the subsequent compiles will be faster because it will already have, you know, compiled all the important stuff. Um, let's see, what's another thing that's going to be important? Uh, the last little thing I'm going to leave you guys off on uh, is actually controlling uh, moving stuff. So if you select an object, you'll see a orange highlight, and that tells you what you've selected. And then by default, you're on a, um, you're on a, you know, X, Y, uh, X, Y, Z or whatever, um, control. You can use dual side controls by pressing on the right, uh, or by pressing on the right corner, you can use two controls at once. Or if you press on the dot, you can control everything in space just by moving it around. Uh, there is snapping, uh, if you go here. A snap to grid position, but you can disable that, and then you, as you see, it moves uh, more smooth than when I have snapping on. When there's snapping on, it doesn't move as smooth. There's also rotation, uh, which works just the same way. You can rotate in all the different directions, though you can't select two different rotations at the same time. It's just a small little limitation of the engine. There's also scale. You can scale two ways at once. You can scale one way at once. Uh, you can scale down. 
Uh, you can scale up and down. You can press the dot. Uh, there's also a there's also a smooth and unsmooth form of scaling. And for rotation, there is a uh, smooth and unsmooth version of rotation, uh, snapping and non-snapping. And then I can just reset all these values. Uh, if you reset these values, it just moves it down here because it was originally just a cube. Uh, but if I just if I press Control Z like every other app on the face of the Earth, I can just move it back to where it was. Um, Control Y redoes, Control Z undoes, you know, everything that every other engine ever can do, uh, or just like you know any program in Windows uh, just does that. Uh, if you're not sad of Windows, it's just a standard for you know undoing and redoing stuff. Uh, I can also copy uh, using Control C and paste objects in the environment. So we paste it in the exact same location, uh, and you can move them around without affecting the original. Uh, you can also say I wanted to go to uh, materials. Uh, I'm going to teach you more about materials later, but say I just want to make... What do you mean? Uh, okay, solid blue. Say I just want to make that blue, I just drag the blue material. I guess the other material wasn't a valid one. Uh, okay, but yeah, if I just do that, um, that works. And, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything that needs to be shown for a basic tutorial. Uh, if you like this, don't forget to leave a like, ask any questions you have in the comments. I'll be fully free and happy to answer those. Um, if you have any, uh, any other of your own tips and tricks, uh, leave them below. If there's anything you want me to do next, leave it below. I'm thinking about working on showing off the blueprint system next, um, but if you have any other ideas, Feel free to leave them below. Um, it's been Daniel of Daniel Game Studios. Have a good evening and good night.